Greetings, the difficulty level of this video is easy. Ever since 2006 on The Futurist, I have maintained a slideshow tracking the technological progress of video games, more specifically the graphical progress, but I also had some commentary around other non-visual aspects of progress, such as the artificial intelligence within video games. And now on this YouTube channel, it's easier to examine the progress in a visual sense. So we take this article, which was my 2016 version, and I had snapshots of video games every 10 years. And the key is, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that track video games year by year, but those small increments lead to understating the rate of progress, and taking 10-year snapshots is more informative, I find. So in 1976, this was one of the most well-known video games of that era, progressing 10 years, 1986, you had this level of graphics, you now had color, you had some degree of three-dimensionality. 1996, you had a multi-textured background and humans that perhaps looked a little bit like humans. And in 2006, you had something that looked better still. And I recall distinctly that in 2006, I found this graphic to be very impressive. The eye adjusts when you see more and more high resolution video game graphics. And now this 2006 graphic doesn't look very impressive at all, just because we've seen much more advanced graphics as time has progressed past 2006. The same is true for any film that you watch with special effects that you may have found impressive 30 years ago when it was contemporary. But if you look at it now, it looks very primitive. All of us have experienced that. And then 10 years subsequent to 2006, we have 2016. And the video that I embedded into the link is something we can click. And you can see the graphics of games that were contemporary in 2016. This article will be in the description box below, of course. But now here we are in 2021. One thing that many video game connoisseurs have observed is how the incremental improvements in video game graphics have gotten slower and slower. And despite the progress that we've seen, the increments after 2016 or even after 2006 are not as large as one would expect. And it ties to the broader point of Moore's Law slowing down that I've explored in other channels. So let me pull up a thumbnail from one of my earlier videos about supercomputing and I will explain how the saturation of computing games has affected the progress of video game graphics as well. This is the thumbnail for one of the early videos that I released on this channel, which I have in this tile above over here. And the subject of that video was how supercomputing gains have been saturating and flatlining. And that applies to all computing because supercomputing is where you would expect the advances in computing to be the fastest and the purest metrics of progress. So in this thumbnail, you can see the horizontal axis, 1990 to 2025, and the vertical axis of supercomputer performance in teraflops and petaflops, and how it was moving pretty well until 2013 or so, and then very dramatically started to go on a lower trajectory. And the green line is the sum of the top 500 supercomputers, and therefore the most important of these three lines. The middle line is the least interesting, that's the number one supercomputer, and the blue line is the number 500 out of 500. But the sum of all one through 500 is the green trajectory here. And this slowing of the trajectory has created an area between the trend line and where we're at that is growing larger and larger. And in that video, I explain how that is missing economic prosperity, all kinds of technological innovations that were forecasted to have occurred by now, by 2021, seem to be somewhat delayed, but they're all delayed by a similar amount of time. And it's all attributable to the saturation in computing growth because we are in an old paradigm of computing that has run its course. Computing can only revert back to the trend line when a new paradigm of computing succeeds and gets enough market share and everyone upgrades to that. But just to match this trend line, which we will eventually revert to because of the mega trend of intelligence, progression and density and the technological singularity, a 100x gain, as you can see, is needed just to intercept the trend line in 2025 or so. If you want to intercept the trend line in 2027 or 28, there needs to be about a 1000x gain between now and 2028. Those are huge numbers, but that shows how far behind we are relative to the trend line. And that tells you how many innovations are delayed or missing and how this bright future that we anticipated seems to be a little bit behind schedule. 
bring it back to video game graphics. That is why you can see the same thing over there. To understand further how computational progress improves video game graphics, remember video game graphics are about a number of polygons. When polygons were very big, graphics were very limited and you saw big squares in old video games. As the number of polygons increased, you got better and better resolution and you could get smoother shapes, more colors, more shading effects such as lighting and so forth were possible. Now, if computing doubles every 18 months, that means the linear distance, when you see where my cursor is, the linear distance has to double. To go from one polygon to a polygon half the size, you have to have four polygons in the same dimension. Therefore, you have to double computing power twice. When Moore's Law meant doubling of computing power every 18 months, that means polygon length or width could double every three years because it took two doublings of computing to get four times as many polygons than half the size of polygons in dimension. So video game graphics always improved as a square root of the improvement in computing power. If you wanted a 4x improvement in video game graphics, therefore you had to squeeze four times as many polygons within a certain linear distance, and therefore you needed to double computing power four times. If Moore's Law meant that computing power doubled every 18 months, it took six years to get a 4x improvement in video game graphics. And that's been going on ever since the first video game that we looked at starting from 1976. But as computing power growth slows, that's how you get a saturation in video game graphics. And this is not something that can be brute forced anymore. If computing is slowing for supercomputers, as we go back to that chart, it's obviously going to slow for everything else that depends on computing power, video game graphics being among them when there is a new computing revolution then you will see more video game graphic improvements and like i said just to get back to the trend line you need a 100x gain by 2025. maybe that will happen from any of the new architectures of computing that are occurring maybe not but nonetheless this advancement at a slower rate still has brought a lot of good visuals in absolute terms and i will end this video with some graphics of new 2021 and 2022 video games featuring what is supposedly in-game play Remember, a lot of this is supposedly in-game play and is available in 2021 and 2022. So this is how much the skilled video game designers are able to do even with the saturating computing tools at their disposal and how computing power is not rising as fast as it used to. When computing power reverts back to the trend line and if that were to happen by the latter part of this decade, the 100x to 1000x gain that I was discussing before will lead to what you can anticipate as very video realistic graphics if they can do this well even with the limited growth of computing power. 
And that is something to definitely look forward to amidst every other innovation that will be accelerated just when computing power reverts back to its long-term trend line because someone creates a new computing architecture. I happen to be involved with a company that is working on just that. I can't share any other details about that right now, but you will be able to find out about that in due course of time. If you found this video informative and if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and thank you for watching.